Welcome back, YouTubers, to the Bread and Burr YouTube channel. I hope you guys are enjoying what we're bringing to the table, and I appreciate you guys continually stopping by to see what we've got going on. I'm trying to make sure that every video is better than the last, and I think I'm doing a pretty good job so far. However, I do have some bad news about today's video. Now, today's video is about the Fury. Now, I had a video recorded previously, but the problem was I hadn't had the data backed up yet, and it was on one single SD card. That SD card got damaged and all the footage is gone. There's two things you need to know about that video. One, when I pulled the oil pan off to replace the connecting rod bearings, a shop rag fell out of the engine. You guys didn't hear that again? A shop rag fell out of the engine. <laughs> now that being said, there is no windage tray in that engine, which a windage tray kind of separates where your oil stays in your sump to all of your rotating reciprocating parts up top, goes right in between. Those engines did not come with those. So that rag had full access right up into the crank and wreaked havoc. And I know it wreaked havoc because it broke the piston skirt off of the number four piston. And I found that in the, you know, 53 years worth of sludge down in the oil pan. So I wanted to clear that up because I make reference to those things in this video. So that being said, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. Hang in there. We're gonna be getting to some high horsepower import stuff here soon. Right now, this is what we've got to deal with. COVID has completely destroyed this whole year for us, racing and, you know, just mechanically being able to do things on the cars. So hang in there. I promise it's coming. I appreciate it, guys. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Brakes are there. The Fury. Damn. Well, back out here working on the old Fury again. And as it turns out, my fix did not last very long. Yeah. Uh, we put bearings in it, Dad and I put bearings in it, and uh, they lasted about three miles, but that's fine. That's what I needed. I needed the car to just run and drive long enough to determine if fixing this engine was worth it because if the car was junk, then there's no reason to put a good engine in it. So the car is good. The car is a solid platform to start working on. It needs some stuff, but the uh, the engine's starting to knock again. So pulling in the shop, I'm gonna pull the engine out of it and send it off to a guy to have it rebuilt because he is the Mopar master. Uh, I'm looking forward to having the, his uh, touch on this engine because it will be fantastic when I get it back. I'm sure I could do it myself, but he's the expert. So. Let's get the engine out of this thing, and then uh, Friday I should be taking it up to him, and we'll tear it apart. But it does run pretty well before it starts knocking. I don't know what that for you, the choke is unhooked. So pump it a couple times. That fires right up. Too bad. Sounds really good right now, but oh, there we go. Get warmed up a little bit here. Steering is one thing that needs work. It's not the greatest. says knocks a lot. She is beast. Too bad. All right, so how I think I'm gonna go about this is I'm gonna pull the bottom end apart first, and then uh, we'll lower it down and take the top end apart because when we go to take the engine out, the 
Um, the top, the, the car doesn't have to be off the ground, so the front tires can be on and everything because the K-member is all one unit with the, the unibody. So uh, we'll get the bottom apart first, lower it down, take the top apart, and then pull it out of there. I don't know how long this will take, but it shouldn't take long because before when I jumped the gun and took the top apart, I think we're only like a half hour from getting the engine out, so I don't know, should be able to have this out pretty quickly. out here in the shop working on the Fury. Um, I got a few things done before uh, I started recording this just because some of it's kind of monotonous and boring stuff but I've got it to a point now where uh, I'm going to start taking the engine apart and figure out what uh, is going on in the areas I didn't see before. So uh, let's talk let's go through it. So as you can see the engine's just kind of a long block right now nothing special. Um, this is something that many people have been seeing for many years so there's nothing too interesting here um, now I've got most of the accessories off I've got the air conditioning uh, the AC compressor there alternator and power steering pump and then just uh, the water block from the front uh, and the, uh, the hoses I mean so basically all of this stuff's just the front of the engine and then what I'm gonna do today is where it'll start getting unique is I'll take the intake manifold and the heads off and understand what's going on inside the engine up top where I didn't see before. I know what's going on in the bottom. It needs a crank and it needs a number five rod and a number four piston. Number five crank journal is damaged because the bearing halves were on the same side of the crank and the number four piston was missing a piston skirt that I found in the oil pan. I don't know how that happened. I don't know if the rag that was in the oil pan got sucked up in the crank and somehow broke that skirt off. I'm not sure. So um, I know it at least needs those things. And I mean, of course, it's going to need head gaskets and probably lifters and probably a cam because it's 53 years old. But uh, I am taking it up to a gentleman that really knows his stuff on these engines. And I think he'll be able to get me fixed up pretty good. And we may even be able to make a little bit more power out of it but power is not the goal here i just want this engine to run right i've got plenty of cars that will make power so um yeah let's uh let's start taking it apart talking about uh, in the introduction video to this car about the engine being converted to a four barrel uh, there's this adapter plate on here that clearly is not you know from 1967 but um, I'm not I've never seen a two barrel setup so I'm not sure how this converts it to a four barrel I don't know if like if the one barrel fed this side the other barrel fed the other side and then it was just this open hole and they used the same intake manifold for a two and a four barrel because this looks like a four barrel intake but there's nothing here so i'm not sure if there was like another plate on there that allowed you know the one barrel to split and go into you know that area but anyway this is a this is the adapter plate that was added to it it's kind of a nice piece you know it's got an aluminum outside and then a, like a plastic insert there but uh yeah so that's that's how the engine was converted from a two barrel to a four barrel so i don't know if that makes it a super commando or if there were other things like a camshaft or pistons that made the um, 
Super Commando any more powerful, but I believe the two barrel had 290 horse and the four barrel had like 325. So I don't know if a carburetor uh, and that like extra airflow is enough to make that much extra horsepower, but uh, I don't know. Either way, this thing has some Super Commando. <laughs> fold off and this is where things could start to get ugly but considering this engine ran okay I don't expect to find anything too bad in here but I did find a shop rag in the oil pan so anything's up for grabs here it's tough to see down in there not super pretty but also not horrible there's number three no I'm sorry that's number two and number four number four is the one with the broken piston skirt it's like a piece of whatever oh just a piece of glass you know no big deal I don't even know where I went probably just dropped it into another cylinder hmm. okay anyway it's like number one pretty filthy in there number two not terrible I mean, these valves are huge man when you're used to dealing with little Honda stuff these valves are enormous there's a nut that I did not drop two of them sweet extra fasteners there's number seven number five number five yeah good grief number seven is completely full of fuel probably I don't know what's down in there but that is completely full that's neato and uh, based on how heavy this damn intake manifold was I did not realize that was cast iron I mean I should have realized but I didn't really look that far into it. This uh, intake manifold weighs a metric ton. We could easily do a weight reduction on this car just converting that to aluminum. I'm not going to, but good grief. I, did not I mean, this thing's gotta weigh 40, 50 pounds maybe. I may not even take the heads off, I'm not sure. I might let Jerry do that just so he can analyze what's going on in here and determine how much we work we gotta do, but Holy cow, dude, this engine, I mean, it's a boat anchor. This thing is ridiculously heavy. So the other thing is I got a really nice setup right here to lift the engine up into the back of the truck to take it there. So I may only take off a couple more things here, like drive plate and I don't know, just some other stuff to kind of help Terry um, get his end done a little quicker. He's offering to help me out here and he's doing me a huge favor. So I want to try to do what I can to help him out. So I may take off like the oil pump I think that is the actual oil pump, but I don't know. I, I don't know what's in there. I don't know if the chain runs out to it or what. So I may just leave it alone and load it up like this. I'm not sure, but yeah, there it is. That's a just a 383 long block, no intake manifold. So yeah, let's pop the head covers off. <music> valley cover off too because it was just six more bolts so you look at it it's pretty much just an old engine I mean <laughs> it's nothing too impressive here but I got to look at the camshaft down in there and honestly for how old it is and what it's been through there's not too many terrifying areas on it this engine ran fine but if this camshaft needs replaced then we're replacing it no big deal but you know while this thing may not impress many people, it is kind of impressive for me to see, you know, kind of where we came from firsthand. I've seen these engines taken apart a million times, but I've never actually taken one apart myself. So it is cool to kind of see where automotive technology is now and where it came from. You know, I mean, obviously this is a pretty middle ground engine. This was about halfway towards the beginning of, you know, gasoline engines. It's just cool for me to see like, this is what made power back in the 60s and then that's what made power in the early 90s and then in the other room is what's making power in the late 90s 2000s 
and then you know I work at a place where I get to see what makes power today and tomorrow technically so I don't know just all that aside it is cool to see where we came from and this is a pretty cool project for me and it's kind of what I was hoping to gain out of it so I hope it's interesting for you guys too and um, I don't know if I'll be able to record us tearing it apart I'm not sure how Jerry will feel about a camera being in his face but I'll try to get some pictures and explain it and see what uh what we can learn from this and I don't know see what we can do with this thing this will never be a super powerful drag engine or anything but it might be fun to get a little bit more power and some more noise out of just to be a cruiser so I think at this point I'm going to throw the valley color valley cover and the intake manifold uh, or I'm sorry the valley cover and the head covers back on it get it loaded up and get it ready to go all right she is loaded up strapped down tight and ready to go let's take it up to get rebuilt and hopefully she runs better when we get her back well she definitely will Jerry's the man so for this next part of the video, um, I just do a voiceover. Uh, I think it's best to protect people's privacy, number one, and two, to kind of keep from waving a camera around in their face while they're trying to work. Um, you know, when I'm waving the camera A to B, it's hard to tell what it might see that, you know, maybe they don't want people they don't know to see. So to protect his privacy, but still get my point across, this next part's just a voiceover. Let's talk about it. All right, so we'll start with the block. As you can see here, the cylinder wall is pretty well glazed over, and uh, the right side is the top of the block, and there's a piston ring ridge there that needs machined out, so these will be going 30 over and getting pistons to match. This is the uh, rod journal that got damaged from the bearing failure, and uh, as you can see, it's not discolored, so it should be able to be machined, get an oversized bearing, and go right back into service. This is the rod bearing that I replaced the old one with. Uh, when I found this, both bearing halves were on the same side in the connecting rod uh, away from the cap and the cap was riding directly on the crank. So this rod and its partner rod on number five will be getting replaced with a new set. This is the stripper glitter remnants from that bearing in the leftover oil in the oil pan. This isn't a great picture, but these are the cam bearings, and you can see on the left side this one's worn out, so they will all be getting replaced. This is the camshaft, and as you can see, the bearing surfaces on this camshaft are not terrible, but the actual lobes themselves are in pretty bad shape, so we'll be replacing that one with a Thug Nasty Grumper. And then here you can see the completely stripped, greasy old engine block. Hopefully when I get it back, it'll be nice and clean, so I can hit it with some lacquer thinner, paint it blue, throw it back in the car, and start driving. So in summary, this engine needs the crankshaft machined or replaced. It needs all new bearings in the block, including camshaft bearings, two new rods at least, board 30 over and 30 over pistons to match with rings. It needs a gasket kit. It needs a camshaft, 16 lifters, two new heads. <laughs> I don't think a single piece of it was any good. but. Jerry Springer was a good friend of my grandpa's. My grandpa has since passed, but as it turns out, he had two 383 heads freshly rebuilt and was just storing them in a shed, and Jerry ended up with them. So I'm getting those heads, so it all just kind of seems like it was meant to be. That was pretty cool. So to have a little bit of you know the part that I missed out on with my grandpa in this car really means a lot to me. So you know while i thought this was just a huge waste of money at first and it probably still is that part's really cool and i'm really glad it happened for that alone